Hey kittens, it's PC Purse. You already know I'm back for another episode of a Dancer Reviews where a dancer is gonna review a TV show, music video, etc. that is about pole and we're gonna talk about the story but also about the pole dancing that we see in it. So we're back for another episode of Jocelyn's Cabaret. This is episode nine. Let's do it. So this episode starts different. It's not Jocelyn and Ballistic talking. It's Jocelyn having a little fight between Chanel, Amber, her makeup artist. Apparently a producer was in there. So Chanel got on the phone with the makeup artist, told him that Jocelyn said that he needs to mind his business. Basically, he was doing too much. Somehow Jocelyn found this out and she's mad. And so she throws apples at Chanel. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've been disrespecting her a lot this season. Now you throwing apples at her, like, and Chanel is just sitting in there like, uh, ah, don't hit me. And I'm like, girl, just do something. But then Jocelyn is mad at Amber because she told somebody, I think the same makeup artist, that Jocelyn isn't needed. This is after Jocelyn got into it with the producer. So now Jocelyn is pissed off at Amber. Amber is trying to tell her, oh, I didn't mean it like that. And she taps Jocelyn. Jocelyn mushes her, gets up in her face like, oh, don't touch me. We're not cool like that. Amber gets upset. She wants Henny to like take up for her, but she's like, I'm, I'm done. And she leaves, which is what Chanel should have done. But Chanel's still sitting there. So Amber walks off and then Jocelyn is just telling everybody that they need to mind their business and calm the hell down. And they're going to pick two new girls since Amber left. So... <laughs> They lined up picking Kay Capri first, which I'm very happy about. She did very good. By the way, the pink hair, I love the pink hair and the pink eyebrows. I, I feel like I got to do that. And then after that, they pick Raven and it's her birthday. So she about to literally do it like it's hubby day. <laughs> she even does a little birthday, a little dance, like, you know, basically what she auditioned with. And I feel so bad because I want Chanel to dance with the girls and Chanel is not getting to dance with the girls again. I did like Raven though, and I do think she was cute. So I'm happy with those two. And I'm glad Amber is not gonna be dancing again because I, I'm over Amber. And it was funny because Black Diamond was like, oh, finally me and Raven are gonna get to dance together. And everyone was like, no, no, you're not gonna get to dance. And then Henny thought she didn't get picked because of Amber. And it's like, no, it's just because the other girls did a lot better than you. No shade, just they did. So after that, we get what we needed last episode when they first did the cabaret, some instructions. So somebody told, I'm guessing Jocelyn told Lexi Blow what the deal was gonna be this time so she could reiterate it to the girls. So when they're in the van on the way there, she's telling the girls, okay, Jocelyn is gonna do the first song by herself. Second song, when the beat drops, we gotta be out there, we're gonna do our thing. She doesn't want too much fast dancing. She wants slow dancing, so the focus could be on her. She wants to put, she tells the girls which one is gonna be on the pole, because they dance softer. I think it was Riri, because she dances softer than Kay Capri. And they just have a game plan. And I'm like, we needed this last time, because last time they got screamed on on stage because there was no plan. But also last time, what did I say? I said Chanel should get picked because her routine was kind of soft and flowy and not going to distract from Jocelyn. She wants something up there that's not too crazy, although that's not really what she got on the stage. We'll talk about that in a second. So then the girls are there. Everybody's excited. Kay Capri is super excited because we know she's been wanting to be in the cabaret since, since the beginning. So this is her shot. This time it's way more people. Like it's really packed this time. And you know, I'm happy for her that it's packed. But I got a, like, I got a vision this time of what the cabaret is. I think I know what it is. So the word cabaret, we're taking it too literally. It's not a cabaret. It was a nice play on words. But what we really, really got here is Jocelyn's own private night at the strip club. It's just her night, just her. Everybody's coming to see her and her own private dancers while she performs her song in a strip club. Not in a cabaret, it's not a high-end experience. It's a night in the club, it's a hood event, but it's cool, it's cool, that's just what it is. It's not a cabaret, but you know, we gotta have a cute little title, so that's what we got. But that's what the cabaret is. So the girls are outside talking. And Kay Capri is telling Riri and Raven that, you know, when it comes to the strip club, like it's not about friends and they're talking about how Chanel is messing up, how she got apples thrown at her, they're not feeling it. And then Kay Capri is just hitting on Raven, like, so am I gonna get 
to lick on your kitty cat tonight. And she's like, no, because you mess with the ops. Like, Amber is your friend. All of a sudden, K. Capri is like, oh, who's friend? Who friend is that? That's not my friend. It's like, you've been saying, I, I could have sworn. Couldn't you could have sworn that she'd been kicking it with Amber? All of a sudden, now that's not her friend. There's no friends in this game. Yeah, Lloyd, like, all right. So then Raven tells her, all right, we, we could do some things. And I'm like, all right. K. Capri is real flip floppy to me. But we like the way she dances. So so then we're inside. We're backstage. This time the outfits are these little pink rhinestone outfits. They're really, really cute. They go out on the stage. It's like, it flows better. It seems better. Like, Jocelyn comes out. I feel like, I know this could not possibly be, but I feel like Jocelyn heard me from the past. Because last week I was saying, you know, she was criticizing Chanel for auditioning like real plain but last week she came out for the first week of the cabaret real plain this time what does she have she had what i said she had the little feather hat she had the boa she had some sparkly stuff going on she stood out this time and it looked like she did a little bit less dancing i can't really tell because we didn't really get to see you know how zeus does they just chop 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 and screw but you know it looked like everything went better and then <laughs> the girls after they performed then this is why I say she didn't really quite get what she wanted. She said she wanted soft, flowy movement. But then I saw Kay Capri get on the pole. She was doing her fast tricks. It was nice. It flowed. It worked. I'm just saying it wasn't soft, flowy movement. I didn't really see the other girl on the pole. But then Riri said to boobs and a coochie on fire this time. Kay Capri had a hand in it somehow. Something. I think her face was down in the kitty cat. I don't know. I just know it was something to do with the two of them. And they were saying that they must have practiced this trick maybe a little bit before something i don't know but it was kind of funny because Riri was standing there with her paint like her thong kind of halfway down i don't know about y'all i can't stand that feeling of things like halfway down around my waist it either got to be off or on but like that little weird it looked kind of strange but i'm here for the tricks i'm here for like burlesque shows and like you'll see like the girls shoot golf balls out or like some fire and explosions i'm here for the erotic xxx event so Okay, that's different. It's still giving strip show erotic event. We here for it though. Okay, so and then Jocelyn decided to be nice. She had everybody sing happy birthday to um to Raven. They bring out a cake. Lexi drops the cake on the floor. Ah, uh, this is probably staged. But they drop the cake. So then she picks up the cake, smears it all over. Raven's boobs and she starts licking it off. So they have another little cute moment on stage and they all did really well. And literally y'all, that was like the whole episode. Not much happened in this episode at all. It was just basically Jocelyn's next, next cabaret performance. Just everything that went on. And it looked like it was pretty smooth. So now we know what the cabaret is. We know what to expect. It's only one more performance. And I feel like maybe they're going to do to us what they did with season one. And like maybe next episode we'll see Chanel redeem herself. That's what I'm hoping for. And then she can continue being the underdog. I feel like maybe that's their storyline for her or something. So maybe we'll see her like do her thing. We see them fighting for a spot next week. And it looked like all the girls were trying to bring it. And it looked like they were cheering Chanel on. So I'm optimistic because, you know... Chanel is my girl. I'm like, ah, I want her to win. They've been doing her so dirty this season. Um, what else? We also see Amber is back. Like, oh, if I stay. And I'm like, oh, girl, I thought she was gone. I thought we were done with you finally. When are you going to leave? But she's back. So we didn't get any, like, full-on routines. But last week I told you guys I really, really liked um, Kay Capri's routine. So I figured what I would do this week is talk about handstands because she keeps going into a handstand and twerking. And I really love handstands, but I'm not that great at them. But I am going to show you how if you are just starting to get into handstands or if you're a beginner at handstands, how you can kind of cheat it, how you can kind of start getting into it and how you can do it safely and comfortably, even if you're not like experienced in them and still look good doing it. So follow me to the poll. Hey guys, welcome to pole class with me. Today we're talking about handstands. And so this is for beginners if you're just starting it out. 
one thing that I want to tell you to do is warm up. That's super important. And then after that, when we're actually doing the handstands, one thing that you want to think about that's super important is rounding your back and not arching it. A lot of times, like, we really want to arch and, like, lift your chest up and, like, look forward, but this is the opposite. You want to round and look in, and you want to think about looking for your hands as opposed to looking forward. So that's really, really important. Other than that, it's something that you're really just going to have to practice and build your abdominal strength and just get used to balancing. So I'm going to show you how you can use a wall to practice if you don't have a pole, but if you have a pole, this is a good surface to practice against. So I'm going to show you some progressions that you can take, and then I'm going to show you how you can do it against the pole. So the first thing you want to do is you want to try to kick up and the goal is just to feel what it's like to balance on your hands and you really want to try to find a moment where you can hover off the ground like this and have both feet off the ground. That's the ultimate goal. After that, what you want to do is try to get both feet off the floor one at a time and you want to try to find that hover again. This one is a little bit harder so just don't give up. Keep on trying. You can do it. <laughs> You got this, just keep on going. All right, so after that, what you wanna to try to do is kick up and go to the pole and balance there and just try to hang out there and see what it feels like. Try to get your balance here. So if we were to do this without the pole and take it to the wall, again, you wanna try those single leg kicks and then both legs fluttering off the ground. And then you wanna to try to kick up and bring your feet to the wall. And then from there, what you're going to try to do is take your feet off one by one and find your balance. So one by one, you're going to take your feet off, try to balance as long as you can, and then come down. So, so now, if you were to take it back to the pole, you can cheat it by bringing your butt to the pole. Then you'll have some balance, and then you can do your split things. If you have kind of funky wrists, um, Using that forearm is going to be your friend. For me, a handstand and a forearm, I feel very secure. I feel close to the floor. And that just makes me feel like I'm not going to fall. All of the mental things that I have going on kind of go away. So I'm able to do a lot more. So from a different angle, set up your triangle with your head and your forearms. You see I'm rounding through my back. I'm not arching or looking forward. And then I can straighten my legs, bring my legs and toes out and around and come up into my handstand. And then from there, I'm free to twerk or do like some leg waves, just flirty, cutie things. And I feel secure. I don't feel like I'm gonna fall. You can also rotate your hips. That's a cute one. What else? Uh, I could arch back and sit up if I wanted to, or I could open up and come into a split. So if I were doing a routine, I could open up, turn around, set up my base, and then open up into my handstand, just like that. And then from there, do whatever little flirty things I'm gonna do. Uh, I love this little presentation thing. Hey, give me money, give me money. <laughs> come down, come out of it, open up again. So let me know if you're training your handstands or if this is something that you're gonna try. You absolutely don't need a pole to train this one. All you need is just some empty space, a blank wall, and preferably a mat <laughs> to take away some of the pressure from your hands. But that's really it, and just be safe. Another place that you could practice is against a couch or against your bed to try to catch you if you flip over, but just keep at it. If you stop for a while, you might have to go back to it again and train it up again like I'm doing right now, but as I continue to learn more, I'll keep teaching you guys more. Just keep training it. Eventually you'll get it and it won't feel so far into your body. Also practice it in your heels if this is something that you're going to want to do in heels because it's going to change your weight and your balance and things like that. So don't forget to do that. If you have any other tips or tricks or anything else that you want to learn, don't forget to let me know. I hope that helped. You know, if you don't have a pole, this is something that you can practice on your own. Um, as I get better at it, I'll continue teaching you more about it. But that's a good beginner way to get yourself into doing headstands and handstands. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you guys had fun with today's episode. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know how many more episodes we have left. I don't think that many more, but look out for some more uh, episodes and things that I'm going to bring you. I'm really excited about it. Check out my socials and I will see you next week for the next one.